Hey everyone, so in this episode we're going to be looking at setting up Bulma and view components. So first of all, let's go into our www root folder and into our lib folder and remove all this nonsense that we don't need. Next thing, I'll leave a link for this in the description. You want to go to the Bulma site and download Bulma. And then just extract this folder to wherever your project is. Nice. Um, next thing, let's go into our pages, layout, and for where we have Bootstrap, let's remove Bootstrap and let's remove this stuff here. Let's put Bulma in the development section. Let's put minified in the production section. Okay, so these environment very environment tags are basically specific to your environment tag. So if you go into Alt Enter to enter the properties of your project, if you go into the debug section, you can see this ASP.NET Core environment variable, and it's set to development. When you publish your project, it's going to set to production. And basically, because it's going to be production, it's not going to exclude this. The, these uh, names are basically a little bit misleading. But what would you rather want to say is include production. Right? So this is included when it's in development. This is included when it's in production. Okay, and at the bottom here, let's clean up this as well. Let's remove these scripts uh, for jQuery. Let's, I don't think we'll need them. Let's just take our link to the admin page so we can get there, put it here, and remove this navbar as we're going to remake it later using Bubble. Okay, I think we're done here. Good. Next thing we want to do is let's go into our index. Let's go. Let's go into our admin index CSHTML file, and let's style this up. Put class container. Let's make another div. Let's give it a class of columns. <clears throat> I'm not going to go too in depth about how all the Bulma details because their documentation is great and the CSS framework is so easy to learn. I recommend you reading through it. I'll be I'll leave all the links in the description. So let's make a column and let's give it as is 3. So it will take up three segments. And then let's make another div and let's again give it a column and let's say is nine. So it's gonna take up the remaining nine spots. And here let's make a menu. Of course that doesn't work. Let's make a menu. Let's give it a P. And let's give it a class of menu label. Admin menu. Then let's make a list. Menu list. Okay. And then inside here we want a link. And let's make three links. So product. Products. Uh, orders. And stock. <clears throat> and now let's have everything we have here. Let's just stick it in here. Uh, let's run this and see what happens. Okay, go to our admin page. Okay, and you can see we have our little menu here and we have our unstyled uh, form here. Let's go ahead and uh, put this in a table. So table, uh, table. Of course that doesn't work, table.table. 
There we go. TR and TD. Now let's make a couple here. And let's just put these in here. And let's take this V4 directive and let's put it on our TR. Okay, let's remove this. And we can get rid of. Actually, no, let's keep the div. Let's refresh. Nice. Now we have a nice, neat little table. Let's quickly add headers to it. So, ID. Product value and the rest, let's keep them empty. There we go. Nice. Now we kind of want to be able to swap between the two, but first of all, let's pretty up our form here. So we want to make a div and call it field. All right, and in here, we want a div control. Stick this in here and just give this a class of input. Uh, let's copy this two times. Let's just stick these here. All right, and remove these. And there we go. Let's quickly see what we get. Nice. Kind of big, but that'll be all right for now. Uh, next thing, the button. Uh, all we want to do is just class button, and let's say that it's is success. And this one is warning. There we go. So if we edit this, you can see this is this swaps to warning. So let's add another button. Remove the class. Let's call this cancel. Cancel. I have a feeling I spelled that wrong. And um, just take this VF and put it here as well, but remove the exclamation mark. And don't click cancel. So let's open our main.js. And let's make a editing false. Okay. So when we get a product, or rather when we edit a product, let's set this editing to true. And when we update a product, let's set this editing to false. Or when we create a product, editing also goes to false. And let's just make sure we can swap between the two. So let's do BF not editing and VLs. So let's refresh. Oh, didn't implement cancel. So, cancel this dot editing equals false. Okay, refresh, edit, cancel. Nice. So, let's give a little button here. Button, class button. Of course, that doesn't work. Button, class button. Add new product. Okay. And on click, let's just do new product. All right, copy this. Put it before cancel. Actually, let's put it even above before edit product. New product. So this dot editing equals true. But let's say that now we don't actually want to touch the model. All we want to actually do is this dot product model dot id. Let's set it to zero. 
Okay, so if we refresh and we add new product, we get to create a product. So we don't actually want this here. Yeah, add new product, cancel. Okay, so you can see how we can sort of bounce around between the two. Good thing would be to add labels. So let's do that. Let's do label and give it a class of label. Let's do product name. Product description. And value. Fresh. We add it. You can see we can get the labels here. Okay, so now that we have this sort of working more or less, uh, don't pay attention to the navigation bar too much. We'll sort that in a bit. But basically, what we want to do is separate this out into its own component. Okay, so the way to do this, it's not the best way and not the cleanest way, but now that we know that this is working, this is sort of where we're going to keep the functionality of the product. Let's make a, let's make a product uh, component. .js. Let's call our view instance. And let's go to components. Right. We want to call this component. So what does this do? This manages product. So product manager. Right, and we want to pass options to it. So, what kind of options can we pass to it? Well, really, all of these options. So, let's go ahead, take all of these, and cut them, paste them into here. One thing we want to do is we want to change the data to be a function, and it needs to return an object. Okay. Okay, the app doesn't change much, but now what we want to do is we want to also specify a template. And make sure to use back quotes because then you can type in text on multiple lines. So let's go ahead and take this template here, wrap it in a div, cut it all paste it into here now I know this is this doesn't look very clean and ideally this is not how you want to do it but you would do it using Babel and Webpack and I don't think this is fitting in an intermediate tutorial there's already too many spinning parts and I want to keep this primarily .NET Core so for practice sake we're just going to put it here and try to keep it simple Okay, so now let's copy the name of the element. Let's go into here and let's just create a tag here. Make sure we import the product component before we import the main.js. Okay, let's refresh. Let's control F5. Uh, let's see what's happening. Components is not a function. Of course it's not. Component set. And it's not components, but rather a component. Okay, there we go. So we got our component. One thing you'll notice though is all of our onclick events broke. So this is due to the double at signs that we used. So quickest, quickest thing to do is to search for two double at signs and just remove them all. There we go. Save refresh and there we go so this component's working we don't need to worry about it anymore close it off so this will be it for this episode i know i've been quite vague with bulma and uh, what it is but trust me the way you want to learn it is just by doing it and the names for the css classes they will just all start making sense they're all very similar and their self their their functionality is self explanatory and you will just learn by doing it. So be patient with it and you will get a hang of it.
you're ever in doubt, go to their documentation page. It's really one of the best documentations I've ever read. I'm moving forward. I just want to show you how we can use Vue to sort of edit this layout. And later on, we're going to take apart these components that we created and we're going to use a custom layout that .NET Core provides. So we're going to have a nested layout. So if you see this layout.cshtml page, we're going to create a custom one here and decouple our components here and stick them into separate pages. And basically, you will see how that works. But this will be it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy it. Like, subscribe. It will help my channel a lot, a lot and motivate me to do these videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them all. As always, see you in the next episode.